Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 58 on circuit envelope simulation basics and modulated analysis. Before we start, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification. After you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's go ahead and understand how can we run envelope simulation in ADS. To illustrate the envelope simulation concept, I have three different type of test benches and all three of them, you will find it very easy to run circuit envelope for your own applications. In the first test bench here, I have a GSM source, which I have used from sources modulated library, configured one gigahertz carrier, and the data rate is defined by a variable to 70.833. So you have a modulating signal running at one gigahertz with that bandwidth. Now for circuit envelope controller, there are two main segments which you need to set up. The first segment is the frequency domain, which is basically setting up your carrier frequency, which in this case you can see one gigahertz and I set that and the number of harmonics which you may want to compute. The second segment is where you define the timing information and that basically because you have a time varying modulating envelope around it. So the way we define the sample uh, time step or the stop time is based on the two criteria. The first one, when we decide the sampling frequency in circuit envelope, it is never based at the carrier frequency. It is completely dependent on the bandwidth which you want to sample. So in my first case, the GSM signal has 270 kilohertz of bandwidth and I set up the sampling time step to be one divided by five times, which is basically five times over sampling. And then the stop time is basically how much longer duration which you want to analyze. So the time step will control the total frequency span, which you are going to see in the frequency spectrum. And the stop time will control the resolution bandwidth of your spectrum. And you will understand in a short while. So with this basic setting, if I go ahead and run envelope simulation, you would be able to see the GSM spectrum, which is centered around zero. And zero here signifies one gigahertz carrier, which we have. Because it's a band pass sampling or band limited sampling, you are only seeing the envelope or the modulating envelope where you exactly your information is and the carrier is taken out from the equation. But this doesn't mean uh, if you use it to feed your amplifier or analyze your amplifiers that it will not consider the effect of the carrier. It's only the display where we uh, you know, uh, represent or plot the envelope where your actual information is. Now in that carrier, you can see the spectrum is not quite dense. And if you move your um, you know, marker here, you can see the resolution which you have is around 1.322 kilohertz. And that is controlled by the length of the simulation which you have performed. Here you can see time domain signal, which is TS of VR, which is time sample signal. And it is your one gigahertz carrier. So it is there in your signal, but not in the frequency plot. Now, if you need more dense spectrum, then you can increase the stop time and you stop time. Essentially, you are increasing the number of samples which you are going to simulate. And when you do that, you will see much higher resolution spectrum available. So if you go here and now move your marker. So let's say I set it to zero kilohertz first so that I find my center point. And now from there, if I just press my right arrow key, you can see now you are running at 330 hertz kind of resolution. So it is much denser because now your FFT has more samples. No surprise there, right? So this is how simple it is to set up and run envelope simulation. Now the second type of analysis I have here uh, for demonstration is a pulse modulated signal. Now in pulse modulated signal again, I have some properties defined here and I have envelope set up pretty much, um, you know, set up like how I just explained to you. So here in pulse modulating signal, you have rise time and fall time typically that's where you have the, the you know, fastest rate of change. That means highest frequency. So while setting up this kind of simulation, I've set up the sampling time step as per the rise time, which is again five times over sampling. 
and rest everything is as same as I showed you before. And when you run simulation, you can see uh, the spectrum, which is like a sink. You can see the pulse modulating envelope. And also along with pulse modulating envelope, you can see the carrier, which is being modulated by this pulse. So as simple as that, no trouble. The third type of simulation, which I want to show, and I also discussed this in one of the previous videos I have, where I talked about how can you read external waveform files into ADS. Now here, when you are reading an external file, the simple rule to remember is this, you know, sampling time step should be exactly the same uh, based on the rate at which the samples were written in the file. So here I'm using the same rate as this file was generated for, and then my sampling time step is simply one over rate, which is anyway four times over sampled data. And then the total uh, time duration for the waveform file is one millisecond. But you now you imagine if you're running this long waveform sequence with such 400 plus megahertz of rate, you will end up simulating a lot of time samples. So while running those kind of simulation, you can use the new capability in ADS called compact test signal. So instead of running a one millisecond long waveform with so many number of samples, I could get as you know meaningful results with a 50 microsecond kind of waveform chunk. And when you run the simulation, circuit envelope will scan the total waveform and it will find 50 microsecond segment, which is statistically very well correlated with the result which you are expecting here. And you can see the input spectrum, the output spectrum from an amplifier, which shows certain distortion, the CCDF curve, as well as you can use distortion EVM function in ADS to calculate the EVM result directly in frequency domain. So this function returns three values. The first value of the array is always indicated by the index zero, and that gives you EVM in percentage, and that's what I'm plotting here. Also, there's another function, distortion EVM versus time, that allows you to see how EVM varies in a particular time segment. And here, the time segment I have this, you know, declared is five microsecond. So for a total 50 microsecond of the simulation duration, you can see EVM per five microsecond, and you can see how they, it is changing because obviously your modulating envelope is changing, hence the EVM is changing. The EVM which you see here is the total RMS EVM for the entire waveform segment which you have simulated. So pretty easy, right? Now the last thing you need to remember while running envelope simulation, let's say you have EM circuit co-simulation component inside or few S parameter files which you might be using inside your sub-circuit is you sometimes might see convergence problems and that's because of the resolution available in this parameter data. Now, in order to have improved resolution in the new version of ADS, you can go to envelope parameters tab and switch on convolution. So this convolution technique is new in ADS and it's available uh, since last one or two releases of ADS and that gives you much higher accuracy as well as good convergence performance, especially when you're dealing with EM simulation data or a measured as parameter data, or sometimes you have a very narrow band filter, you know, kind of data in the circuit which you are analyzing. So always remember to use this convolution whenever you run into convergence error. And also there are other tabs which you can switch on to resolve convergence problem. But that's all for this tutorial. I hope you like the content presented and it will be useful for your design work. Thanks a lot for watching this video and wish you all the best in your design work.